Hi friends, hope you enjoyed my previous sessions of data mining. So in the last class, I discussed a priori algorithm in detail, right, with an example. So today I'm going to discuss about FP growth algorithm with an example. So if you missed my previous class, so that is on a priori algorithm, please kindly watch that video by using a link. FP growth algorithm. Now the abbreviation of FP growth algorithm is frequent pattern growth algorithm in data mining. Frequent pattern growth algorithm in data mining. Now, as we know that so a priori is an algorithm for frequent pattern mining that focuses on generating item sets and discovering the most frequent item set. So as I discussed earlier in my previous class, so that is an a priori algorithm. I took one example also. So in the, so there are only nine transactions, right? So if it is a nine transactions, so to find out a frequent item set by using that nine transaction, we may not get any problem, right? So now, a priori means just like focus on generating item sets and discovering the most frequent item set. Suppose if you want to purchase milk, obviously you are going to purchase a bread also. So if you want to purchase milk and bread, so along with that milk and bread, you are going to purchase so butter also sometimes, right? So, so I can say that these are the frequent item set. So there are n number of customers may purchase the same frequent item sets. So how to find out frequent item set. So in the supermarkets by using data sets, so obviously we need one specific algorithm, right? So now present I used a priori algorithm to find out a frequent item sets, right? So if it is a less transaction, so a priori algorithm is really suitable. Now assume that there are some crores of transactions available in the data set. So obviously this a priori algorithm is may not useful. Right. So these are the some shortcomings of a priori algorithm. So now just I want to give brief about a priori. It greatly reduces the size of the item set in the databases. So however, a priori has its own shortcomings as well. Right. Now, so I want to discuss shortcomings of a priori algorithm, just like limitations, disadvantages of a priori algorithm. Now there are, so here I concentrated only two disadvantages of a priori algorithm. The first one is using a priori needs a generation of candidate item sets, right? So candidate item sets are really required for a priori algorithm. These item sets may be large in number, right? If the item set in the databases is huge. Now a priori needs multiple scans of the database to check the support of each item set generated and this leads to high cost. So now, so in the last class, I discussed one example, right? There I was took six transactions. So if it is a six transaction, obviously, so there are multiple scans by using first transaction to second transaction, first transaction to third transactions. So if it is a less transactions, simply we can calculate by using multiple scans. So assume that there are one crores of transactions, how we are going to so scan these multiple items, right? So this leads to time taking for uh, time taking uh, process and uh, high cost also. So that's the reason. So a priori limitations means so a priori needs a generation of candidate item sets and uh, it needs multiple scans, right? So these shortcomings can be overcome using the FP growth algorithm. So there you may not get any candidate, you may not get any candidate item sets as well as there is no multiple scans. Now frequent pattern growth algorithm. Now see, so this algorithm is an improvement to the a priori method. So improvement to the a priori method a frequent pattern is generated without the need for candidate generation. So in FP growth algorithm, there is no candidate generation, right? So we used the candidate generation in a priori algorithm. FP growth algorithm is represent, represents the database. So in the form of a tree called frequent pattern tree or FP tree. So this is purely based on FP tree. So I'll discuss FP tree now. So this tree structure will maintain the association between the item sets. The database is fragmented using one frequent item. This fragmented part is called pattern fragment. So fragment means just like reducing the space. 
right so the item sets of these fragmented patterns are analyzed thus with this method the search for frequent item sets is reduced comparatively so by using one example you will get the idea about tree structure of ffp tree frequent pattern tree is a tree like structure that is made with the initial item sets of the database the purpose of the fp tree is to mine the most frequent pattern so in the apriori algorithm also so we find so frequent pattern so but if it is useful for only limited transactions assume that there are some more uh, transactions in the data set so obviously so we need fp tree so this is also just like mine the most frequent pattern so each node of the fp tree represents an item so here item means represents the item means just like node of the item set now the root node represents null so obviously if it is a tree the initial uh, node is null only right so same way the root node represents null while the lower nodes represent the item sets so if it is item sets available in the root node so obviously first node is null remaining are lower right the association of the nodes with the lower nodes that is the item sets with the order item sets are maintained while forming the tree structure so here if it is a tree fp tree so we need to concentrate on root node as well as item sets that is lower nodes so this is the association of the nodes in between lower nodes and the item sets now see i want to take one example of fp growth algorithm so you will get the clear idea about how to find out frequent item sets by using fp growth algorithm Fre